is Congressman Chris Shays, Republican from Connecticut, who has just returned from his 14th trip to Iraq. Congressman, what did you learn in your latest visit? Well, I, I learned what I suspected, and that is that this new government uh, really isn't got, doesn't have the will to do uh, all the successful things that happened uh, last year and part of the year before. You are a Republican, and you are now breaking with the president and calling for a timetable for withdrawal of U.S. troops. Why the change in your position? Well, first, I'm not breaking with the president in supporting the mission in Iraq. I am a strong believer that we need to be fully engaged militarily, economically, and politically. And I believe that if we leave now or leave uh, prematurely, uh, you will see uh, clearly higher oil prices, but what's more fearsome is you'll see an Iraq uh, that is uh, dominated by Iran. But you are uh, calling for a civil war, though, right? And, yeah, and you'll, but one more thing, you'll see the terrorists win, and we can't allow them to win. I'm calling for a, a timetable on three things. One, that they set provisional elections, that they have reconciliation and a timeline to do it, a timeline for uh, finishing the Constitution, and give them a timeline on how long our troops will be there doing the police work that ultimately we want them to do. Uh, Congressman, with all due respect, while you say that you are not breaking with the president, you are calling for a timetable for withdrawal of U.S. troops. And the president has said that that uh, would be emboldening the terrorists. Uh, Republicans in your party have called people that are espousing your position now of being cut and runners, of wanting to throw in the towel. Why are you doing that now? Some may look at what you're doing and saying it's political expediency because you are facing a very tough reelection in Connecticut. Well, first off, uh, taking this position doesn't help me politically. Uh, but more importantly, I want to make sure that you see the distinction. I agree with the president in our mission. I agree that we have got to succeed. The only difference, and it's a big difference, but it's, a, it's the one difference. And that is, I think, the way to get the Iraqis to wake up to do the heavy lifting is to let them know that we are not there indefinitely, that there's not an open checkbook, uh, that we're not going to take sustained losses indefinitely. The Iraqis need to know that they're going to do the heavy lifting. And if they know that, I think they'll start setting the timelines for a constitution, for reconciliation, and for a provisional election. Congressman, you know, let's be clear, I've because learned. you've made your 14th trip to Iraq. You have fully supported everything that the president and the secretary of defense sure. Donald Rumsfeld have done up in have done in Iraq up until now and yet even before you got back on the ground in the United States you were calling up reporters and you called the White House did you not to tell them that you were now changing your position or modifying your position on the Iraq war to be clear what was it that the generals told you on the ground yeah. that has caused you to make this change in position well let me first be clear I, I don't support Rumsfeld. I was someone who said he needed to step down. When he made the decisions to disband the Army, the police, and the Border Patrol, when he allowed the looting, uh, my judgment, he needed to step down. So I have been a strong critic along the way on things that I don't like, and I have been a strong supporter of the war because I believe the Iraqis need to succeed. Well, so the Democrats what did I on the other I, side of the aisle well, in the House of the Representatives are now making right. clear, according to First Read, which is our political right. document of MSNBC, that they are going to call for a no-confidence vote on Secretary Rumsfeld when Congress returns. So will you vote with the Democrats? Well, if we have a vote, I have no confidence in Secretary Rumsfeld, and I haven't had confidence for a long time. But let me, let me just be clear with you. I believe that we need to do something to motivate the Iraqis to do the things they did last year and the year before. Since January, they spent five months creating a government. Five months. And during that time, you did not see progress. Then I was there six weeks. But you are arguing that a timetable no, would help let me motivate finish. the Iraqis. That's, a, Absolutely. That's, a, that's your position. That's fine. But the president, okay, the, the, and the, the right. leader of your party says that such a thing actually would embolden the terrorists. Well, I think he's wrong. And I think what, what is, is important to recognize is we now have three months where this government has not shown the political will to do the things that the previous government did. It made tough decisions last year. This government, in fact, Sistani, the cleric, uh, pointed out that everybody in the government needs to come back home. They're away. It's almost like they're on vacation, not recognizing that heavy lifting has to start now. They don't have years. They have months. 
I believe, are setting this kind of timeline of when we get our troops not doing police work, we'll help them understand that reconciliation may be a better alternative. You have been to Iraq 14 times, and this is the first time that you are calling for a timeline for withdrawal of U.S. troops. And this comes well, exactly. after, in Connecticut, there was no. a very divisive primary where Senator Joe Lieberman, who has been a hawk on the Iraq war, lost to an anti-war supporter, Ned Lamont. So don't you think many okay. people can look at your change in position and mm. see this as a reflection uh, that you have changed because of the political battleground in Connecticut, not because of the battleground in Iraq, but because you feel politically endangered? Oh, I think people say that, but uh, now, now can I give you the answer? Why would I have set timelines last year when what they did is they had an election to create a constitution, had a timeline, then created the constitution, I gave them a pat on the back, they then had a timeline for the election to adopt the constitution, that was progress, then they created a new government elected under the constitution. Why would I have ever thought to do a timeline then when they were making so much progress? It seems to me they created their government, we needed to give them a chance to create the government, now they have the government. This government has been placed for three months, and now it's very different in the past. Pro progress was made in the past. Progress is not being made now. And when you have government officials tell me, and when I ask the Iraqis, why aren't you moving forward? They say, we will, but we don't want timelines. I say, yeah. they need to have timelines. You called the White House and gave them a heads up that you were going to make this change in position? No, I called the White House to say, you know what, you're going to hear all the press say that my position says that I don't support the war in Iraq, and the press is dead wrong. No, but I'm, let me just ask the, you, because no, you no, no, that's told why I called NPR them. in an interview that a timetable would be foolish, and now you're calling for a timeline. So which is it? Well, because their timeline, the Democratic timeline, was not based on specific facts. Their timeline was just get out whether or not we can do it. My timeline is based on this important fact. We tell the Iraqis when they replace our troops, our troops leave. It's based on sound data. And we're going to have a hearing. We're having a hearing in March, excuse me, in the 15th of September to talk about our security needs. Then we're going to have another hearing the same week on, on reconciliation. And then we're going to have a hearing talking about the consequence of leaving prematurely, which I oppose. All right, Republican Congressman Chris Shays of Connecticut Thank announcing you. that he's going to now hold hearings in Congress on Iraq after returning from his 14th trip. Congressman, thank you for your time.